I have made this video, because I disagree with the classical presentation of the trolley problem. It is typically set up as two different scenarios with identical potential outcomes based on the choice of a bystander. I would like to explain why they are not identical, and why the discrepancies in the bystander choices are a logical consequence of the difference of the scenarios. I am guessing that viewers already know the trolley problem, but let's go over the basic setup. Scenario number 1, an empty trolley is out of control and headed for 5 people on the track who will be killed by the trolley. There is a switch to send the trolley to a different track. There is however also a person on the second track, who will be killed if the trolley is diverted. The question is then, would you throw the switch, if you had the chance to do so? Scenario number 2, the trolley is again headed for the 5 people. There is no switch, but instead there is a fat man standing on a bridge above the track. He has enough bulk to stop the trolley if you were to fall onto the track. Now the question is, would you push him off the bridge, if you had the chance to do so? On the surface the scenarios seem to be the same, one life in exchange for five. But people tend to say yes, to throwing the switch and no to pushing the fat man, so why is this? Some may say that it is, because throwing the switch is less up close and personal than pushing the fat man, but the scenario can be modified so the fat man falls off the bridge at the push of a button, and the typical response will remain the same. Some argue that it depends on intent, that throwing the switch is not directly intending the death of the single person on the other track, but I think this is simply wrong. In my view the difference between the scenarios is simply an evaluation of immediate cost of the choice, possible outcomes and consequences. And also, the way interviewees come to a decision is by imagining the actual situation, and the setup is not really equivalent to reality, and does not encompass the variables that would be part of the real scenario. In scenario number one, by throwing the switch you are changing the scenario to have less people in harm's way. The cost of the decision is time. It is not obvious that the time used could be used for other life-saving activities and after the switch has been thrown there will still be time to pursue other options to save the one. Failure to throw the switch correctly does not cause more harm and the risk that other lives will be in danger further down the track will be equal on either track. In scenario number two, by pushing the fat man you will have the same amount of people in harm's way, but you are counting on the body of the fat man to save them. The cost is already one life and from what we know from reality it is not obvious that the bulk of a fat man will be enough to stop a trolley out of control. Even if you feel confident that it will, your decision has had a high cost. Failure to assess the situation could either result in the five people also being killed, or maybe they could easily step away from the track, and in that case you have cost one life with no gain. At the very beginning the decision has had a high cost in a scenario where the outcome in reality would be very uncertain. Even if you are successful your decision will have further consequences. If you are allowed to make a decision where it is far from certain that the decision will have the value of the life that it costs, so will everyone else. When also taking into account that your decision probably had to be reached with a very limited time of deliberation, you are putting your own life at great risk to be sacrificed in a scenario with equally uncertain outcome. I hope you liked this presentation and please leave a comment. I have made